Do have a question? There you go. We're so happy that you're here at USC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very welcome addition. Um, can you describe your timeline for the new hire that you're anticipating? Holly, <laughs> <laughs> you told me there would be no I'll stop. Pat Arbeck, I know. Pat, you're not here. I know you're on Zoom there. I'll, I'll be calling you. But uh, timeline. So uh, that's that's a great question. It's actually a, a perfect question because when you look at uh, uh, coaching hires across the country, you have to really be respectful of your next coach and what they're going through in their program. And I think that was one thing that uh, Carol Fult really helped me do a great job of is, first of all, treating our former coach with respect and dignity. And, and supporting Clay. And uh, our football players heard that news directly from Clay and myself. Not from our little friends that, that we love to follow and all that stuff. And uh, I think it's, it started there. And uh, I think now the timeline is, okay, what does that look like? Uh, every morning I take a couple pills called patience pills. <laughs> and it's really hard to swallow right now because uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. Because our next coach uh, more likely is currently involved in being very, very successful with their current team. And so uh, we are going to want to be respectful of that. But we're also going to have to look for the right windows to ensure that we can uh, hire a coach prior to uh, early signing date, which is middle December. Uh, but obviously, bowl games go through the end of December. So uh, that is the biggest challenge for us is timing. But uh, we will not rush and uh, ensure that we're thorough and that we get the right fit. So uh, I encourage you all to take a little patience pill, too, as well, because <laughs> it'll help. But uh, it's something that will uh, really put a lot of pressure on us as, as clock ticks. It's already October. so. I can kind of feel it already a little bit. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joan Levis. Nice to see you, Mike. Yes, Joan. Um, I just have a question about uh, how uh, you have kept a positive attitude through the past couple of years with all the noise going on around the program. Um, with respect to the football program and how you kept the players and everybody in the building having a positive attitude? Well, I think, I think that's an awesome question. Thank you for asking that. I, I don't want to be emotional about it, but uh, what other option do we have? I, I, I think that it's imperative for us to have a, an attitude that's contagious. Our next coach is, is watching every single one of you in this room. Recruits are watching everybody in this room. Do they want to be on your team? Do they want to be around Jake? Do they want to think about climbing that ladder and standing in front of that band? I think that's ultimately it. So I think we have to be attractive to our next coach, their family, staff's family, recruits and their families, brothers, sisters. And so I think it's imperative for us to be positive. If we can't be positive, and present all the awesome things that represent USC LA, our conference, uh, all the different wonderful history, our incredible weather, which I'm really growing to really appreciate. <laughs> it, it is shame on us. So I really think it's imperative that, again, that's why I talk about the five A's. What was the first one? Attitude. Little thing, huge difference. So when people walk onto this campus or they walk into this room and they see this incredible group of women, and leaders saying, hey, look at what's going on there. It's, it's no, no mystery why they won three national champions in women's sports. Because guess what? Women matter here. Women lead here. Women do special things here. And they want to pull that together. And guess what? We embrace that. We embrace that. You don't think I tell our male student athletes, hey, who's next? Three women's last year. Pretty good. You know, so we need, we need to pick them up. And, and, and help lead them. So I think it's about being positive. And I think that, again, a positive attitude is contagious, and I think it drives that sense of hope and optimism that is so important. And uh, I'm a big believer that often the best teams don't uh, win based on talent. They build, win on 
on, on their culture. They went on their family. I think that in the short time that I've been here, again, so much of it uh, in COVID, trying to understand this Trojan family thing. And you know what? If we're a family, then we need to act like a family. We need to support each other and encourage each other as much as we can. And uh, if we want to have a small family meeting and close the doors <laughs> and, and talk and work on things, I'm all for that. But when that door opens, we come out with smiles on our face, with that fight on uh, mentality by it. Everybody wants to be a part of it to the point where we go, okay, wow, that's great. I want to be a part of that. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you for asking that. That was not a plan, by the way. So, so thank you. Bianca, do you have anybody from yeah. our live stream? Yes. So we have a question here from Karen Mohair. She says, could you share your strategy to increase the visibility of women's sports? Karen, what a great question. Thank you. I think you're seeing it already. I hope that you, uh, how many of you follow all of our different social media pieces? If not, you should. Follow them and, and begin to see what's going on. I hope you're seeing it there. I hope you're seeing it in uh, the way we salute and, and uh, uh, recognize excellence in our women's teams from the way we recognize them at game day to the point uh, where we recognize them any way that we can. If you haven't seen their beautiful national championship rings that we bought them mm -hmm. and some of our donors out there, there's another reason why it's made it And uh, I think that it's about uh, providing every resource for them, whether it's charter jets when they're stuck somewhere to get them out of there safely and at home so they, they can rest and compete to their next piece to doing everything we can to surround them with support and helping them put that together. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to be the co-chair of the Gender Equity Review Committee for the Pac-12 Conference. And we're looking at more ways to look at better television times, better platforms to promote women's sports. Uh, uh, the Pac-12 Conference, led by USC, is the number one conference for women's sports in the country. And we're doubling down on that. We're going to double down on that in a big way. And uh, I've mentioned uh, President Fult numerous times, but uh, having a partner like that who embraces the investment in what we're doing, uh, in those women's sports is huge. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to push and grow and uh, let people know that, hey, if you want to do something special and you want to compete in 2028 in, in our own stadium with the Olympics, USC is the place to do it. And we believe that. Thank you for that question. Okay, I've got a hand over here. Hi, Lori Jackson, um, proud Trojan, but also the daughter-in-law, proud daughter-in-law of an Air Force Academy grad of 1967, awesome. Awesome. Uh, which he very much carries a lot of the core values that you're speaking of from integrity to service before self and excellence in all that you do. So I want to applaud you for that and bringing that to our university, um, especially with the student health care that you're focusing on. As a mother of four, I appreciate that, that are up and coming for college, and it is important. Can you share a little bit more about that? Well, thank you very much, and uh, congratulations. Thank you for your son's service and, uh, and what they represent. And uh, again, as a father of a son and a daughter and three grandchildren, I understand the importance of ensuring that we're doing everything we can to take care of our student athletes. So we haven't talked a lot about, uh, Colleen talked in the introduction about our vision to be the most student athlete centered program in the country. What does that mean, Mike? We just want to win. <laughs> okay. Well, if we want to win, let's act like winners in how we treat our kids, our young men and young women that compete for us. So I think that's mental health, that's physical health. I mean, I know we've got a legendary trainer in the room here with us today. I think that's the way they eat. I think that's the way that they train. That's the way that they're coached, the way they lift weights, the way they go to school, the way they, they're tutored, the way we travel, the way they stay in hotel rooms. I think it's all that. So I think we've got to ensure that our investments represent that commitment to winning and ensuring that their minds are, are clear so that they can compete and do all the things that they need to do. So I think to, to answer your question, it, it's really about ensuring that we're doing every single thing we can for them to be successful. Injuries, imagine how, what it's like to go through an injury. Jackson Dart, our uh, Gatorade National Player of the Year, it, it takes a head helmet to the knee and rips his MCL in the second, first half of the game against Washington State, comes back, plays the whole second half, and then he's out. 
So imagine what he's going through. So what are we doing to make sure he's got the best care, the best rehab, but what are we doing to help him mentally too to understand, hey, he just went from being on top of Jake's ladder to, to, to not even traveling. Okay, that, that's, that's tough. And, and, and I'm talking about a football player that you all know and have followed, but think about all of our other athletes, our water polo athletes, name any of our sports and what they're going through to ensure that we're creating an environment for them to be successful. Just like the Air Force Academy talks like what? They talk about four pillars, right? They talk about academics, they talk about military, they talk about faith and the importance of that and everything that they're doing there and, 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 and pulling all that together. So I think it's important for people to understand it's the whole person that we want to support so that they can go on and be awesome Trojans like many of you women ha have been and, and going on. What prepared that for you? It was your training at SC and all the different things that you were doing. So uh, I think, again, it's about ensuring that we're doing everything we can to help them be successful on and off the fields. And we believe if we treat them like winners off the field, they'll win on the field. We really believe that. Hi, um, I'm Catherine. I'm an undergraduate stu uh, studying um, health promotion and disease prevention. Um, and I was just wondering if, um, kind of on the topic of student health and athlete health, um, there's been a lot of news lately about like Olympic athletes using alternative medicine practices like cupping or acupuncture. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Well, it's interesting. We, uh, we actually have a, a sponsor of a very high profile uh, former player that actually is in the uh, CBD uh, cream business. And people say, Mike, how dare you? What are you doing inside of marijuana and everything? I'm like, okay, well, maybe science is, is trying to tell us something. I don't know. Uh, I am in favor of anything that is legal that allows our student athletes to have the best care so that they can have the happiest, best time as a Trojan and beyond. So as long as it's legal and we can have our medical team at, at, at USC and Keck that are the best in the world believe in it, then I'm going to support that. This young lady has been waiting a long time in front here. It's, it's not a question, I'm just going to give a comment. Um, from one of our viewers online, Patrick Arbach said, thank you for the shout out, Mike, and he is so proud about how you respond and answer the tough questions. Well, you tell Patrick I'm still coming over to tip his desk over on top of him. I'm joking. Patrick's great. I love him. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Okay, and as Mike has said, we have somebody up here who's been waiting. And, this young um, lady in the red. Oh, I, I thought, I thought We can do both. I'm, I'll try well, to Okay, so yes, because we have time probably just for these two, and then we'll, I think that might be our time. Okay. So we'll do that. Okay. And I'll be brief. I want to give you two words. Awesome. Yay. You are awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And we, the women of Town and Gown, we want to be on this grand adventure awesome. with you. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. See, see what a little attitude does. So, so now if you were listening carefully to what she said, she's given me so much encouragement, it's raising the bar of competitiveness for me. No, seriously, right? She's basically saying, hey, we're on this journey with you, big boy, but you, we got to go now. Let's go. Let's do this together. And so thank you for that. That's what that attitude is I'm talking about there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, all I have to say, Wilma, Wilma is our attitude booster on our board of directors. She's amazing. Thank you. All right. Much. This is your final question. Here we go. Hi, my name is Judith Harris, and I am from Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, that's what the shout out was to the Bearcats. And I wanted to ask a question about what you looked at and what strategies you were using to elevate the University of Cincinnati football team. Last but not least, difficult question. It, it is a difficult question, but one I'm happy to talk about. Uh, 
It was interesting. When I walked into the University of Cincinnati, the previous athletic director had been there 20 months, and he's now the athletic director of Virginia Tech. His name is Whit, ba uh, ba uh, Whit Babcock, and he's a good guy. And they had worked on a strategic plan, and it was called One Team. And they had five words, is what they called it. So what new athletic director comes in and blows up one team? <laughs> Not me. So they had five words. They had teamwork. They had determination. They had excellence. They had together. And they had family, I think it was. And I said, okay, how can we take their five words that the, so many people have worked on and try and lift them in, in the sense of, hey, can we make them our guiding principles? And similar to our guiding principles here, we have communication, mm -hmm. respect, integrity, accountability, trust, and equity and inclusion. And equity and inclusion is not the last one. It just helps us spell create, but we spell C-R-I-A-T-E rather than C-R-E-A-T-E. So you start thinking about how that fits together. So very similar to trying to incorporate the one team and thinking, all right, what makes us special? and trying to pull together all those different basic guiding principles, and we didn't deviate from them. So guiding principles do what? They help serve as guardrails for you not to go off the hill. So imagine coming down, I haven't driven it recently, but I believe there's some areas when you come down the mountain with the Hollywood sign on it, that there's some areas that doesn't have guardrails. So if you make a mistake, you're going to have a tough day, right? So I think it's imperative that we stay within those. So at Cincinnati, we hired a coach and asked him to bring in additional coaches on his staff that embrace those guiding principles, playing within the rules, but ensuring we keep the, the, the young men accountable, doing everything we can to support them, providing great strength coaches for them, creating great facilities, building a schedule. I'm really thrilled I scheduled the Indiana and Notre Dame back to back. We did that on purpose to provide the high profile opportunity for the Bearcats and, and understanding all those different pieces. So I think it comes down to hiring someone with great leadership, somebody with an incredible attitude uh, and passion and determination that young men want to gravitate to. It's about somebody that connects with young people. When we look for a head coach at SC, and we've been fortunate enough, as Colleen said, to hire five of them, we're looking for a leader and somebody that can connect with young people, can recruit them and build them and grow them and hold them accountable and pull all those different pieces together. So it's not rocket science. It's really not, but you can't let your guard rails down and, and compromise your guiding principles and allow other things to seep in to the point where you're cheating, you're not taking care of the, the athletes, uh, and, and all the different things that happen. So I think that it was a team. It was a team, and, it, and just like we have here, we have a phenomenal president that loves and appreciates and respects in collegiate athletics. That's huge. That's why I'm here. So I think, okay, now we've got a, an incredible president. Now we've got an incredible provost. I could go through the, the entire president senior leadership team, and guess what? They are all partners. And they're holding our feet to the fire, but guess what? They are partners. So I think it's about ensuring that we are partners with our next 